Well, it's a busy, busy morning here out on the prepping patio. I've got, what, three separate projects going on. I've got a test of this new camp ring burner that I bought. I'm boiling up some potatoes for the chickens. They're leftover potatoes from cutting my seed potatoes inside. So we'll uh, talk about that later. Being the first weekend of the month, it's also generator, generator test time. So I'm going to be doing that later on today. We're going to be working up on the woodlock and the firewood for the next season. I'll square it away, hopefully get that all done in one fell swoop this weekend. But the project I want to talk about today is, and I apologize for the glare, it's so bright today. I identified a, uh, a weak point in, uh, in my electrical preps on the last power failure we had, which was in the middle of the night, it was like three in the morning. And I knew that I should get out and fire up the, the old Honda here. The problem with the Honda is that it, unlike the, the Generac, which has a 220-volt uh, uh, output and a, and a big, big cord that goes to the, um, the uh, transfer panel here, uh, this only has 120 volt. So what I do is I set this up, I run extension cords, put them in the windows and all that stuff. I didn't want to do that all that, all that jazz on the uh, early morning while it was raining and 3 in the morning, freezing cold outside. So I just neglected it. Now luckily the power came back on uh, pretty quickly and I didn't have to worry about it. But uh, it got me thinking that maybe I need a better way. So the you know, first thing I'm going to talk about is the better way, which this cord may, will, uh, will be part of. So this is what I ended up making. It's pretty simple. It's just a length of heavy duty extension cord from the colors. You can no doubt tell that it came from Home Depot. It's a, uh, a 12 gauge extension cord. I think this is 25 foot, 20 foot, something like that. I lopped off the business end of it, the usual end of it. I kept the, the plug end, the, uh, the socket end I cut off and uh, kept probably about two or three feet of that because that was a nice uh, nice plug. It was a, um, uh, a lighted one, so I wanted to keep that. This is a, let me get the right number on it, an, a NEMA 1430, so it's a 30 amp um, twist lock connector. It's a 220 volt um, twist lock connector. It's got four conductors, one of them's a ground, one's a neutral, and there's two hot legs. Now normally, the generator over there the yellow one, the Generac, that's putting out um, 220 volts um, across two legs. So it's 120 volts on one leg relative to neutral and 120 volts on, on, the, another, on the other leg relative to neutral. Go across the two legs, or go across a neutral in one of the legs, and you're at uh, 120 volts. Go across this other neutral, and, or this neutral and the other leg, you're at 120 volts on the other phase. Go across the two phases, and you're at 220 volts. That'll run the um, the well pump and, and big appliances like that. Gener the uh, Honda generator can't do that, can only do 120 volts, but I still want to be able to put um, power into the panel. Now I don't want to be able to run the generator, I mean, sorry, the well, I don't want to be able to run the, the furnace or anything like that. I just want to run a few outlets. I want to be able to get a refrigerator, um, ref the re refrigerator and the freezer up to um, voltage and uh, maybe a few lights and um, some equipment. So that's why I built this thing. What I did was, and again, this is one of those things where if you're not an electrician, you shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm not an electrician, but I'm doing it anyways. Read my disclaimer if you have any doubts about whether you should be doing this or not. In fact, if you have any doubts about whether you should be doing this, you shouldn't. Just don't do this. But anyways, what I did was I took this connector apart. I don't really want to take it apart and show you right now, but I, I ran the neutral, um, the ground to the ground conductor, the neutral to the neutral conductor, and then the hot, which is the black in here. Um, I ran to the um, the two um, line conductors, um, and I just jumped between one and the other. Both of those will have 120 volts on them. When I plug this into the uh, the socket that goes to the generator panel, uh, both of the legs will be 120 volts. It won't be 120 volts, it won't be 220 volts across the two legs, 240, across the two legs because it's in the same phase, so there's not any difference um, relative to neutral. Um, but at least I'll have 120 volts on both sides, and when I show you the panel inside, I'll show you what I'm going to do uh, to take advantage of that. 
Okay, so I lied. I decided to take this apart anyways. Um, it's kind of hard to illustrate what I'm talking about without, uh, with actually, without actually looking on the inside. Again, don't do this. Okay. Um, here's the extension cord, the remains of the extension cord, the conductors. White is neutral, green is ground, black is hot. And you can see that I've jumped hot from the Y connector on the, uh, um, on the socket to the X connector with a short piece of the, uh, the same wire. Um, that's the internal arrangement and I decided to mark the outside here so that when I um, test these voltages that uh, they, uh, I know which conductors are which. So these are the two hot conductors. I use a little silver there which maybe you can see to mark the uh, neutral. The ground is the big one with the, uh, with the hook in it. That's the one that gets connected first. If you look in um, inside, you'll see that the, the ground connector is actually longer than all the others. So when you push it in the socket, that's the one that gets made first. The ground circuit is already established by the time the others are, uh, um, uh, are made. All right, I've got the generator on. One of the nice things about that is it's so darn quiet. Here we go, I've got my meter out, and I'm gonna measure, oops, sorry for the bump. I'm gonna measure across these legs. Now, this was the neutral again. Oh, not in the frame. This was neutral. So, I'm gonna reach around the camera here and stick this in the other leg. And you can see it's 128 volts, or 127. And this side, also. Now, if I go across these two phases, or these two legs, the two hots, whoops. should not see any difference because they're in phase. Oops, there we go. They're in phase with each other, so there's no difference. But I go across here, there's your 120. Hopefully, again, I'm not an electrician, I just play one on a blog. Hopefully, that will result in exactly what I'm looking for on the panel, 120 volts on two legs of my uh, panel, which I'll go in and show you in a minute and uh, everything will be cool. We'll, we'll actually be able to power a couple of circuits. So now I'm down at the panel. This is the, uh, the breakout panel. Sorry for the lighting, but uh, when you turn off breakers, this is what happens. Um, this is the panel that's specific for all the generator circuits. This is fed by that uh, outlet that I showed you upstairs. Um, I've come in here and I've turned off all the breakers, including especially the water pump breaker, which you see is a double which means that it takes 120 from both phases of that uh, um, uh, of, the, of the line and, uh, and can run the 220 volt um, pump. The rest of them are single breakers and they're all 110. I've gone through the list over here and I've um, determined which ones I want to actually turn back on. I want to turn on the fridge and the freezer, obviously. Um, basement lights would be nice since I'm down in the basement. It also powers the smoke alarms this off. Um, the, um, oh, sorry about the strobe. Um, I know the garage is over here, I think. That turns more lights back on down here. Um, I don't need the air handlers. That's seven and eight. I don't need those. Kitchen area lighting, I would like that to be on. The dining room plugs in the family room um, might be a good idea to have those on. Receptacles in the bonus room, but I'm going to leave those off for now. Re bonus room receptacles are important because I need to run extensions from them. The office and desk, that's where my communications are, and the network connections. This is the other circuit in the uh, bonus room. I need to decide between those two, and I can't do that right now. Uh, let's see, this is the uh, telephone panel, or the alarm panel, so that's good. And uh, the garage will run the, um, uh, the garage door openers. Um, and uh, I'll probably put this one on, which is what this is, the kitchen plug. Leave the water pump off. So what I've got, I've got three or four circuits off. Five, maybe. So now I'm going to flip the switch. This is the transfer switch. This is what happens when you leave your kids alone with stickers when they're young. I flip the transfer switch, and this will take this panel off of the main panel over here, so off of the, uh, the grid supply, and move it onto the generator. Let's see what happens. I see light. I see no breakers trip. Let's go outside and see what happens. The fridge is on. That's a good sign. 
I hear the freezer running. That's a good sign. The alarm's coming back from trouble mode, so it's powered up. And I think I hear the generator has come off the EcoBoost and it's gone to high throttle mode, so this works. Yep, all good. I've got myself a solution here. Simple and easy. Come, put the, uh, put the generator out, the Honda generator out, take the orange extension cord, run it from the generator there, go flip the breakers. I'll have a uh, diagram of which breakers to, uh, to flip, and uh, quick and easy. That'll accompany the, um, the instructions I have for the uh, for the Generac generator, which use which can power all the circuits. But uh, just want a quick and easy um, way to get back online, at least minimally. This is the way to do it.